Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the proper positioning of your wave maker. And I'm going to tell you why one of these is way better than those silly little bubbles. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Kev. I try to make helpful videos on various topics in the aquarium hobby. I've helped a bunch of beginners get started in the hobby. So take a second, look around the channel. Maybe you'll find something you like. If you do, consider subscribing so you won't miss any new content. So a wave maker in your aquarium is a great tool with multiple benefits. It does exactly the same as a bubbler or air stone, plus much more. Some beginners don't actually understand how your tank water is actually oxygenated. Don't worry, we were all beginners at one point. So, let me explain. I'll touch on it real quick just in case any beginners are watching. As the bubbles rise to the top of your tank, they're not oxygenating your water. Only when they reach the surface and the bubbles pop and break the surface tension is when transfer of oxygen happens. So Wave Maker is going to help oxygenate your water just like those bubbles and possibly even more by constantly breaking a large portion of the surface tension. A wave maker can also help calm the aggression in aggressive fish like these African cichlids. These guys get crazy sometimes. The flow and pressure of a wave maker keeps them preoccupied and not so focused on each other. And a wave maker can create a circular pattern of water flow in your tank to avoid any dead spots, kind of creating a vortex in your tank if your wave maker is positioned correctly. Take a look at a wave maker in action. This is a video I took of my old tank after leaving the wave maker off all night and then turning it on the next morning. Check out how much detritus is pulled up from the substrate and eventually finding its way to the filter intakes. So I'd say a wave maker comes in pretty handy. So let's start off with the assumption that you only have one wave maker and one filter. First thing you want to do is make sure that it's positioned high enough in the tank so that when you angle it upwards, it's going to break the surface tension and create waves. This surface agitation is going to allow the transfer of oxygen into your tank. This is one of the multiple benefits of a wave maker, so we got that part covered. Now determining which side of the tank is best for your wave maker depends on which side of the tank your filter intake is on. For instructional purposes, I'm going to say that this is the left side of the tank and this is the right side of the tank, as if you are looking at your tank. So let's assume that your filter intake is on the left side of your tank. Since the intake strainer is at the bottom of the tank, and we already determined that your wave maker best position is going to be on the top of the tank to create surface agitation, then your wave maker is also going to go on the left side of the tank with your filter intake. And here's why. As water is pushed across the top of your tank from left to right, it's returned to the wave maker from the bottom of your tank. So water coming back to the wave maker along the bottom from right to left is also going to hit your filter intakes that's on the bottom left side. This will make sure that all the water is in a constant circular motion in your tank and it's going to help carry the detritus along the bottom towards your intake. Your filter outputs at the top of your tank should also be facing the same direction as your wave maker to help push that top tank water over to the right side. I hope this is making sense. If you need me to clarify a little bit more, just leave a comment down below with your question and I'll make sure to get back to you. Now, if you have two wave makers, your second wave maker is also going to be strategically placed. This second wave maker is going to go on the right side of your tank, but this time along the bottom. So using the same logic as before, as the water gets pushed across the top towards the right side, once it hits the right and goes down, it's going to catch this second wave maker and that wave maker is going to push it across the bottom back towards the left. Additionally, this bottom wave maker is going to help push any detritus that's laying on top of your substrate. It's going to help push that detritus towards the left side where your filter intakes are and scoop it right up. Awesome, right? Now, if you have two filters with intakes on both sides, then it doesn't really matter which way you put your wave makers as long as one is on top and one is on the other side on the bottom. This way you continue that circular motion in your tank and make sure that those filter outputs are pushing the same direction as the wave maker that's on top. So I use two different wave makers. On top is the more powerful one to make sure I get good surface agitation all the way across the top of the tank. I use the Frisia wave maker. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's 1500 gallons per hour and at the bottom, I use a smaller one. I use a Sun Sun JVP, which is 800 gallons per hour. These two are the best amount of flow for this 75 gallon tank. I run them 24 seven and only turn them off for feeding time. I'll post links to both of those in the description below. 
Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody with the lefts and the rights and the ups and the downs. But if you were confused, drop me a comment below. Let me know how your tank is set up and I'll try to help as best as I can. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe by hitting that circle right there. And then watch one of these other cool videos that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. See you on the next one.